We have made a couple of videos this summer about the Toronto Raptors and how they are changing the game of basketball with their insanely long team uh, with all the 6'8", 6'9s that are out on the perimeter locking people down. But we need to talk about one in particular today. No, it's not Pascal Siakam. It is the man, the myth, the reigning rookie of the year, Scotty Barnes. Uh, they also have a couple of good guards in Gary Trent Jr., and Fred Van Vliet, and then a guy in OG Ananobi that we hope to see continue to progress. Uh, so they got a lot of pieces this year. I wanted to, you know, just specifically talk about uh, Scotty Barnes for a video. They, they also got Precious Achua and Christian Coloco as a couple of front court pieces, so we'll see what Nick Nurse is able to do with that. But before we get started, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you do enjoy it at any point. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video and leave me a comment down below, as all four things will really help us out in the YouTube algorithm. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Looking at Scotty Barnes, the man is going to be a problem. He already is a problem. Uh, looking at his Rookie of the Year campaign last year, where he put up averages of 15.3 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and 7.5 assists a night. Uh, he was, you know, there wasn't really a clear-cut Rookie of the Year winner, but he impacted this Raptors squad uh, very, very much. 49% from the field, only 30% from three, still got to work on that, uh, but 1.1 steals per game and .8 blocks a night, uh, as well as a lot of minutes and he was also playing backup point guard. You see him get the ball, go coast to coast. I mean, that's just too easy. You see that a lot of times. I believe he's about six foot nine, so he is a problem in transition. Not to mention that he has the absolute clamps. Probably the best perimeter defender. Well, him and Herb Jones. That's a good. That's a good, good competition right there as to who it was the best perimeter defender last year. Uh, but Scotty Barnes was right there with him, and the crazy part is he'll only be 21 years old next year, one of the brighter young stars in the NBA, but nobody talks about him. Nobody gives him his respect. I don't understand it, uh, but, you know, maybe one day it will come. Uh, but, yeah, I, I expect another big year out of Scotty Barnes this year. Now, the new way of basketball, as much length as you can possibly get. Masai Yuri, I hope I finally said his name right, has been doing a great job over the last few years, uh, just accumulating so much length and, well, length and athleticism on the wings. Uh, Precious Achua, we'll start with him, who they bring in in the Kyle Lowry trade, um, center, for, or center power forward type guy, uh, very long and athletic. You also got Chris Boucher, another guy who is actually getting up there in years, kind of bounced around the G League before he finally found a home with the Raptors. Uh, then you got OG Ananobi, who continues to get better year in and year out. I'm expecting some more progression out of him, maybe even touching close to 20 a game, although there are a lot of mouths to feed on this Raptor squad. I also got the Rookie of the Year that we just talked about and um, Pascal Siakam. Now, <laughs> there's another five of these guys. They got Delano Banton, Julian Champagny, Otto Porter Jr., who they just brought over from the NBA champion Golden State Warriors. You got Christian Coloco down in the paint, and then Thad Young, who you re-signed to, I believe, a two-year, $16 million deal. These Raptors are deep, very deep. Uh, now, let's take a look at a potential weakness. It's, it, I mean, it could go either way. Some people are calling Fred Van Vliet a weakness. 20.3 points per game, 4.4 rebounds, 6.7 assists. He gets it done on the offensive side of the ball. No question about that. And he is a very, very good defender for his size. However, you know, like 5'11", maybe? Is that? That's got to be like his maximum height. 40% from the field, 38% from three, 1.7 steals per game. So I like his steals numbers. I wish his efficiency would be a little bit higher. People are saying that that's a weakness that teams are going to exploit down the line. Uh, like in the playoffs, they're just going to put bigger guys on him. But, I mean, I feel like that's just very matchup dependent. Uh, so it, it could go both ways. Like you could, there, there's definitely a world where I can see Fred Van Vliet being a weakness defensively, uh, even though he is a very, very good defender for his height. But I think that I don't think you can move him or trade him or say like blame losses on him just because of his height. He's he's a great defender for his size. Uh, now we also got Gary Trent Jr. here, who I think could be in for a breakout season. 18.3 points per game, 2.7 rebounds, and two assists per night last year for this Raptors squad, and I think he is about to have a monster 
year. 42% from the field, 38% from three, and 1.7 steals. I think his percentages, they definitely need to go up as well, but 38% from three, that's very nice. Hopefully his field goal percentage goes up four or five points, and then he's looking at a super efficient year, um, probably touching 20 points a game if he just takes the same amount of shots that he did this year and kind of, you know, makes more, <laughs> I guess. Uh, now, let's take a look at another trade that Masai Uri stole. I hope I said it right again. I've been butchering it in previous videos. Uh, but bringing in Gary Trent Jr. and sending out Norman Powell, this was just highway robbery. I mean, you could almost say he deserves jail time for how much of a steal this was. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. for Norman Powell. Powell not even on the Blazers anymore. Gary Trent Jr., one of the most promising young players on this Toronto Raptors squad. Man, I think the Blazers are definitely regretting this right about now. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, now, a dynamic duo, we haven't really talked about Siakam that much. We did talk about Van Vliet, uh, but still, Van Vliet can give you 20-7 and seven a game. I don't want to move on from that anytime soon. But Pascal Siakam, another guy that if he wasn't injured, we would be talking about him a lot more because he'd probably be cl touching close to 25, 26 points a game if it weren't for his first you know, 10 to 15 games of the year where he was still working his way back into the lineup. But he's a guy that can, I feel like can definitely consistently give you good minutes, good put up good numbers uh, on this Raptor squad as their probably best player on this team right now with just what he can do at 6'9", 6'10", and he's got great ball skills for a big. Now, another guy here that we need to talk about that I expect to keep progressing is OG Ananobi. We talked about it earlier, but every year since his rookie year in the NBA, he has continued to go up in terms of points and rebounds. 17.1 points a game last year with 5.5 rebounds and 2.8 assists while playing the most minutes of his career and also playing lockdown defense on the other side of the ball. You look at his percentages here, shooting at 44% from the field, 36% from three, and also getting 1.5 steals per night. Like I said, I expect him to keep progressing and to become one of the better players. I mean, this Raptors team, they're kind of loaded, but I still expect him to be one of the better players, one of the leading scorers next year. Now let's take a look at the lineups here. Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr. in that backcourt. Uh, they look, it's looking pretty good. They're basically running it back from last year. Um, backcourt, you know, that's where most of the scoring is going to come from. Although, OG and Barnes can give you about 30 combined. And then Siakam can give you 25 as well. So, all five of these guys can really score. Last year, they really leaned on this starting lineup to play the majority of their minutes. But they have kind of beefed up that bench a little bit, bringing in Otto Porter Jr., that championship experience. That's another guy you can give minutes to to take some of the stress off of these guys because, you know, three or four of these guys were in the top ten in terms of minutes played last year. they got to take some miles off these guys next year. Uh, but overall, a very, very nice, solid starting lineup coming into the year. Let's take a look at the bench here. Um, guys like Malachi Flynn, uh, Otto Porter Jr., Thad Young, Precious. I expect Precious to take a... Big time step. They they kind of lack in guard depth, although they do have Jeff Doughton, and I guess Delano Banton will be the backup point guard. Um, he kind of played it some in the summer league, although could Malachi Flynn take over those responsibilities? Definitely. Um, dropped like 73 in a pro M the other day. Man, can go off. Uh, he was different in college as well. Uh, but I expect, you know, this bench team is not the greatest. They, good, they have a lot of good wings and a couple good bigs. But like I said, that guard depth is very, very weak on this Raptors squad. Would have been nice if they could have kept Goron. Uh, now, a couple of others that we need to talk about here. I've got Delano Benton, who I'm probably butchering that name. Uh, but he is, you know, he'll probably get a lot of minutes at the backup point guard. But so will Scotty Barnes. Christian Coloco will probably be seeing some work um, as the season progresses in the NBA, and then Justin Champagne, just another long athletic wing that they could be getting some minutes to in that rotation again, trying to take some minutes off that starting five. With that being said, that's going to be it for today's video. Make sure to the like button and the subscribe button if you do enjoy it at any point. Also, make sure to leave me a comment down below as it really helps out in the YouTube algorithm. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.